All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back. And, you know, we all take for granted so many things. And, of course, our relationship with our doctor and our insurance company and our insurance and all that, that's uh, all going away uh, rather, uh, so in some cases, more s uh, slowly and uh, other cases more rapidly, uh, depending on who you are and what you have. But um, there's, there's a doctor shortage, and the doctor shortage is going to get worse. And joining us now to talk about all of that is Grace Marie Turner, president of the Galen Institute. Hello, Grace Marie. Happy New Year. Steve, a pleasure to be with you. Happy New Year to you, too. All right, so let's, let's talk about what we're facing uh, as time goes on and why, under Obamacare, are we going to be looking at more and more of a doctor shortage as we go along? Absolutely. Even before Obamacare, we had a shortage of at least 40,000 physicians. Remember, there's this huge baby boom generation aging into Medicare. They're going to require more health, uh, more health care. And not only do we already have a doctor shortage, but at least half of physicians today are seriously considering leaving the practice of medicine early, doing something else, or retiring early because of the incredible rules and regulations that are dictating how they practice medicine, primarily through Obamacare. But it's just Obamacare for many of them is just the last straw. Yeah, and, and basically, uh, uh, among a, a million other things, what they've done to doctors in their business, uh, from the business aspect of it, is put in all the red tape and more that you know they, the the the, uh, the Obama administration has done with small businesses uh, to, to to frustrate people right out of them. That's exactly right. And in some ways, you do wonder if there isn't part of a part of an overall agenda that the fewer big practices, the fewer big hospital chains, the fewer big insurance uh, companies that they have to work with, the easier it is to control them. When you have all these independent doctor practices, all these independent hospitals, it's much harder to control them. And so they seem to not mind if they drive them out of business. Why would, it, why would you care if you're seeing a nurse practitioner instead of an actual physician? Well, I care, but the system doesn't care. Right, and that's the thing. I mean, I mean my, my doctor, you know, just joined a... a, a uh, the hospital network of doctors basically they took over the practice I mean he's still there uh, but they run his office and it's a good deal for him but it, it, it is what's happening and and as you said that's that's the plus my doctor didn't go away um, but a lot of doctors have and will and and more and more people will not be going into medicine uh, so so when you talk about nurse practitioners I mean people don't understand they're gonna see nurses instead of doctors uh, the, the wave of the future, from what I'm reading, is that you'll be diagnosed over the Internet on Skype, or I've even heard of these cockamamie group um, uh, doctor appointments where you sit in a room with five or six sick people and, you know, you're, you're diagnosed one by one as a group. I mean, what we're headed for is a disaster. And then I, then I see a story that the more than 3,000 operations have been canceled by the uh, NHS in, um, in, in Great Britain in the first two weeks of this month alone. And that's where we're headed also. Well, and you've seen in, in, in Canada, another single-payer system, that in some provinces, hospitals close down entirely in December or some part of December because they've run out of money. But with the doctor, with the doctor practices, Steve, many of those doctors have sold their practices to hospitals because they just can't deal with the paperwork burden and the regulations. That's exactly it. Now, yep. They're That's now right. employees of those hospitals. Yep. And worse, the hospital can now bill the Medicare twice as much, two, two or three times as much for that exact same procedure because the, the doctor is now operating under the auspices of a hospital instead of independent practice. Same care, same medications, but two or three times as higher cost for the taxpayer and for Medicare. So this is also going to be a huge cost driver in a system that already is not serving patients. You know, you know, Grace Marie, just listening to our conversation alone, we're going to scare a lot of people. We don't mean to do that, but if they get scared, so be it, because this is where we're headed. You would think, you would think that, that the Republican leadership could come to the microphones and say, we're not going to fund Obamacare anymore, and here's one reason why, and here's another reason why, and here's another reason why, and have all the conversations you and I have had over the years. But no, 
they just fund it and shut up. They don't want to. They don't want to have the fight. They don't want to risk a shutdown. They don't want to do this, and they're going to kill us. They do. They really do want to have the fight, but they have to do it strategically in a way that they can win. Shutting the government down doesn't help them win on Obamacare, but strategic strikes at the heart of this law absolutely can. Yeah, but he'll veto. He'll veto them. He'll veto the he bills will, that are like, they, like he did with the. Not uh, necessarily. Oh. If you get enough. You get enough Democrats to support this. You could, it will be very hard for him, right. and you tie it to other the other appropriations legislation. He's going to have to sign through well, this. Well, we will see. I think this is a this is a this is a different kind of president. Grace Marie Turner, Happy New Year. Nick Happy Adams New joins Year. us Thank next. You. Thank you, Grace Marie.